Okay, in this video we're gonna find the inverse Laplace transform of this rational function. So we have s squared minus 3s plus 1 over s minus 1 quantity squared times s plus 1. And we're gonna make use of this table of Laplace transformations. Um, okay, and so since we wanna make everything look like the right hand side of this table, that means we need to decompose the inside of this inverse Laplace transform using partial fractions. Okay, so let's do that. So notice our denominator is always already factored, so there's no factoring that needs to be done for that. We can just immediately go to setting up the equation uh, as follows. Good, so we can set that equal to a over s minus 1 plus b over s minus 1 squared. So recall from the technique of partial fraction decomposition, you need to include terms like this up to the power that's present in the left-hand side or whatever you're trying to decompose. And then finally we have this is plus c over s plus 1. Okay. Fantastic. So now at this point what we can do is multiply this entire equation by s minus 1 squared times s plus 1 and that will have a nice simplification effect. So let's do that. So s minus 1 squared times s plus 1. So let's see what that does. That leaves the left hand side really nice. So we have s squared minus 3s plus 1 equals a times s minus 1 times s plus 1. That's what's left over after we distribute that term through. And then we have plus b times s plus 1 plus c times s minus 1 squared. Good. So now let's multiply out what's happening on the right hand side and then combine like terms as we can. So notice this is going to give us a times s squared minus 1 plus b times s plus 1 and then plus c times s squared minus 2s plus 1. Now the next thing I want to do, I want to skip straight to the system of equations. So notice I have uh, on the right hand side up to s squared and on the left hand side up to s squared. So I'm going to have three equations uh, determined by the coefficients of s squared, s, and 1 on each side of the equation. Okay, so on the right hand side of the equation, notice I get an s squared term here and here. And so this one is going to be attached to an a and the second one's going to be attached to a c. So here I get a plus c is the coefficient of s squared on the right hand side. On the left hand side it is 1. Great. And now uh, I have s attached to this term right here and then uh, this term right here. So notice on the right hand side I'm going to get b minus 2c and this is equal to negative 3. Okay, great. And then now finally for constants, so on the right hand side I have that's from this term, this term, and this term. So notice that's going to give me um, negative a plus b, and then plus c. And then finally, that's going to be equal to 1 on the right-hand side. Okay, good. So now let's see how we can simplify this. So notice, here I have an equation that just involves b and c, so maybe we can use these outer two equations uh, to turn that into an equation that just involves uh, b and C, or one of them involves just B and C. So let's see what we can do here. Notice in this case we can rewrite uh, C, uh, or maybe rewrite A as 1 minus C. Great. Now we're going to plug that in for A there, and notice that's going to give us the following. So that's going to give us C minus 1 plus B plus C equals 1. Okay, cool, which is the same thing as uh, b plus 2c equals, uh, let's see, 2. Okay, great. 
So that's what we have. But now we see some really nice structure. So notice here we have b minus 2c equals negative 3. And here we have b plus 2c equals negative 3. So that means we can add these two equations. So adding those two equations, let's see what we get. So we're going to get 2b. So b plus b is 2b. We're going to get negative 2c plus 2c, so that's going to be 0. And then we're going to have negative 3 plus 2, and so that is negative 1, negative 1. So that tells me that b equals negative 1 half. Okay, good. And now notice, if we have b equals negative 1 half, we can easily get c. So notice we can plug that in here. So we have negative 1 half plus 2c equals 2. So we can add a half to both sides. So that's going to give me 2c equals uh, 5 halves. Good, so two and a half, which tells me finally that C equals five over four. Okay, fantastic. Now we can plug that into this equation. So notice A equals one minus C. So that's four over four minus five over four. So finally that gives us A equals negative one over four. Okay, good. So now we have the value of A, which is negative 1 over 4, B, which is negative half, and C, which is 5 over 4. Okay, so from there, I'm going to clean up the board, and then uh, we're going to finally find this inverse Laplace transform of this rational function. Okay, so what we ended with is we wrote this rational function using partial, fra using partial fraction decomposition as this sum. And so now I want to use the linearity property of the inverse Laplace transform. So notice this is negative 1 over 4 inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 1 minus... Um, minus 1 over 2 inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 1 squared, and then finally plus 5 over 4 inverse Laplace of 1 over s plus 1. Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and look at our chart. So here, this is going to give us negative 1 over 4, and then this looks like the inverse Laplace transform of e to the at. So the Laplace transform of e to the at is 1 over s minus a, so that means this inverse, inverse Laplace transform is e to the t. Okay, good. Now let's do the last one because that's the next simplest one. So now notice that looks like uh, the Laplace transform of e to the minus t e to the minus t because here we have 1 over s minus minus 1 Okay, and then uh, finally notice that this looks like um, the inverse Laplace transform of something like this good and something like this so notice if we have n equals 1, we get 1 over s squared, and then that's been shifted, so this is going to be minus 1 half, 1 over s minus 1, uh, sorry, t times e to the t. Okay, good. So notice t goes to 1 over s squared, but then e to the t is going to shift that uh, to 1 over s minus 1 squared. Okay, so this is the final answer for this inverse Laplace transform and the end of the video.